Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. This week I'm going to be doing more March jobs which includes more seed sowing and I'm going to be trying to coppice the eucalyptus which I'm pretty nervous about because the eucalyptus are quite precious to me. I don't have that many of them and I'm scared that I'm going to damage them but I've done my research and now is about the right time to do it so I am going to talk you through the process of what I'm doing. I'll, I'll talk you through what I've learned through my research and we'll do it together. <gasps> I'm only going to do about half of the trees I think just because I'm too nervous about destroying all of my eucalyptus. So I'm just in the green house, well I'm in the back, in the back flower field and um, I've just fed the alpacas. So they're having a bit of a roll around and a bit of a chill in here and I'm just checking on my seedlings. Things have been germinating a little bit slowly over here. I think I sowed most of the seeds last week and the week before. We've only got a few things germinated so far. What have I got? We've got some germination from the limonium uh, which is the status that I'm going to use for fresh and dried. I've got some scabious germination tiny couple of cells of rudbeckia germinated already i just noticed one of the dill cells has started to germinate so hopefully the rest will follow the asters have germinated the more scabious some rat tail status some cornflowers lavatera and maybe a little bit of the corn cockle and then we've got amaranthus and i've noticed that the snapdragons in the tupperwares with the soil blocks have just started to germinate so i'll talk you through all of the things that i have seeded since uh, my last video and oh i just want to say thank you special thank you to emily i believe i don't know who you are i'm really sorry um i tried to find you on instagram but send me a message because i want to say thank you personally but i got sent these pens uh marker pens for my labels because i was complaining the other week about always losing them so now i've got a pack of 10 so thank you so much i never expected anybody to do anything like that for me so and hopefully i will never lose another pen this season so thank you so much you did not need to do that for me so last week i sewed some cosmos some auric some zinnias there's only one tray of zinnias so i need to sew a couple more more trays because I, there's a hundred cells in these trays and I want a few more than a hundred so I'm gonna have to sew some more of those. I've got another tray, um, sorry two trays of sunflowers here. I've got Pro Cut Plum, Ruby Eclipse, Sonia, Vanilla Ice and Teddy Bear and those are going to be spaced at least 12 inches apart so they will take up two beds which is roughly 20 meters of um, field beds. And then I've got more Cosmos here. Um, and that is all, oh, wait a sec, what have I got over here? I've got, over there, I've got some Orlea, some Flax, some Corn Cockle, and then in the top one there, I've got some Ami. So that is about, this greenhouse is about full now to um, fill out this field out here. So I just need to sew a few more zinnias for the polytunnel and some flocks for the polytunnel and stocks as well. So yeah, today is quite a nice warm sunny day, hence the t-shirt, but we are expecting a storm, I think, coming on the Gulf Stream tomorrow. So we're gonna get heavy rain and winds, I think. We'll see if that impedes our ability to get much done this week, but at least we can concentrate on everything in the greenhouse. Jobs mainly this week so are going to be seed sowing and coppicing the eucalyptus and possibly some work out in the field if I can get out there, but maybe not if the weather's going to be bad. So these are the things that I started off yesterday in the greenhouse and I've decided to bring them in the house because as you can see I've got celosia and I've got stocks and stocks don't necessarily need excess heat but celosia would definitely appreciate a little bit of extra heat so I've brought those in here um, just to give them a bit of a boost. It smells very humid and greenhouse in here today which is obviously a good thing. 
In here, we have a few things germinating too. We've got some Craspedia. I was asking on one of my previous videos whether anybody had success with Craspedia. I've not managed to, that, that is the, um, the drumstick plant with the yellow ball on the top, which is popular dried flower. But anyway, that seems to have germinated quite nicely. So I'm looking forward to that. I've got a tray of that in here and I've got a tray of that in the other greenhouse as well. A little bit of germination from the saponaria. And then we've got some germination from the spangle grass, which is Chasmanthium latifolium that I sowed last autumn. And then it's had a cold spell over the winter in the greenhouse. And now that it's warmed up, it started germinating, which I'm happy about because there aren't many seeds in a packet, so the more the better that I can get to germinate. I haven't had any germination from these poppies yet in this tray and I'm just wondering whether something's gone wrong down there because poppies usually germinate quite quickly. What else have we got? We've got Greek cress that's germinated. There are There is some Rattail status that has germinated in this tray as well. Um, sorry if you can hear my dog. Oh, some Achillea has germinated, that's the perennial. Some Aquaclinum, which is the straw flower. The Amaranthus in these trays hasn't germinated yet. Do you remember when I said I was going to do an experiment where I was going to grow some in a seed tray and some in the soil block uh, tubs? And the soil block tubs germinated within like two or three days and these haven't even germinated yet. So definitely we'll be starting them off in the soil block tubs from now on. Uh, and then the other thing that I was up to this week was potting on all of this turd flax, which is the Cannon Went variety. And I think there's 110 plants here. And then wh whilst I was potting those on, I put on Instagram, I asked if anybody else was growing it. And a few people got back to me and said that, yeah, it's valuable for their flower farm and it's really a nice flower to use. And also the seed pods are really nice as well. And then, when I was sowing the soil blocks yesterday that I've put into the house, I also sowed some more poppies, which is like a bread seed variety, which will just produce the standard size pods, whereas the ones that haven't germinated yet are the, the giant poppies. And then also some Salvia scleria, uh, and a, a, that's a white and a pink variety. So there's still a few things to sow in here, mainly zinnias, and just a few other perennial things that I got sent in the post the other day. Okay, so I'm about ready to start coppicing my eucalyptus and I'm quite nervous, but I've been doing my research on this website called www.hardy-eucalyptus.com and I believe that website is um, made by a lady called Hillary, I think, because I follow her on Instagram and I love seeing the pictures of her eucalyptus. It has to be my favourite foliage and I just wish I had 10 times more because I love it or even 100 times more, who knows. So yeah, I've been looking on her website. I think she has a book actually about cutting or growing foliages for cutting. Uh, so definitely check that one out. I'll put it in my Amazon shop if you're interested in having a look. I definitely need to purchase that one for myself because I've been interested in checking that one out for a while. But yeah, she's got a really informative website about coppicing eucalyptus. The trees have to be mature, so you have to, I think, grow them for two seasons before you cut them. And then I think that there's um, a minimum width of the trunk that you, that you have to measure before you start coppicing it too. So check this website out if you want to know what that is, just because I'm picking out the main points here. So we have to cut the trees 18 inches from the ground and we have to use a slanting cut to disperse the sap uh, away from the stump uh, and also cut it south facing so that the sun can uh, help to heal the wound. And you have to remove all the side shoots and tidy up jagged edges. Uh, and then it says here that young buds can be seen breaking dormancy after about four weeks. Shoots will be 400 to 500 millimeters long by eight weeks and grow quickly over the summer. By the autumn, the new stems will be anywhere between 600 and 1200 millimeters long and ready for harvesting. So we can harvest that between October and March, which is when the shoots will be ripe. So I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, if this method produces some good cut foliage for us this year. It will be handy for my uh, wreath making in the winter. 
So I'm only going to do a couple of trees, like I said before, just because uh, I'm a little bit nervous and some of them are still a little bit juvenile. So we'll, um, we'll see how it goes. So these are my eucalyptus trees. I put these in a few years ago. I can't actually remember what year it was when I put these in, but this one here and this one here was at head height last year. So as you can see, it's grown a lot in the last year. What I'm going to do, I think, is find the biggest ones and coppice those. And as you can see, I mulched this with straw last year because this isn't really planted in any kind of way where I can put weed membrane on it because uh, everything's already quite established and nothing is in a row or anything like that. So uh, I decided to mulch it with straw and it worked really well. So I'm going to keep up with that I think. So I'm actually just waiting for my GoPro to charge so that I can film the eucalyptus chop a little bit easier uh, and what I'm doing is I'm so, uh, weeding this sedum and I'm also uh, dividing a couple of the bigger clumps. I only put this sedum in last year so it's not they're not big plants just yet so I'm not going to play with them too much but some of the big clumps I'm just sticking my trowel straight through them and I'm um, splitting them in half and planting them. So a few of the sedums that I put in here last year didn't take, so I've got empty holes in here. So I'm just filling in the empty holes just so that I've got a full bed of sedum. And then next year I will divide it even further because I think that there's gonna be no limit to the amount of sedum that I'm gonna use. So according to this website, the size of the tree at the base of the trunk needs to be in excess of two inches before you prune it down. So I think I'm going to target this tree behind me because it's kind of a funny shape and it's not really got a lot of stems on it. So if I can encourage some new growth, that would be fantastic. Let's see. Well, I would say that that's probably more than two inches, probably three or three and a half inches. So I'll measure the height of it, 18 inches. So we're going to cut it about there. So about knee height, which is what I thought. I'd seen that on YouTube. So we're gonna go with about knee height and I'm gonna start chopping it with the saw and just see if that works to begin with. Ta-da! Smells good. So I've cut the, the stump slanting towards the south. So that'll help to dry out and heal that stump. Let's see who my next victim is going to be. Is the trees cut. I don't feel as bad as I thought I was going to feel about it. I'm feeling hopeful that we're going to have some lovely eucalyptus foliage by the end of the year and I've got a couple of 
buckets of eucalyptus foliage. In total, I chopped three trees down uh, and I've got another three or four or maybe five left. I'm waiting for some eucalyptus seeds to come, some nice varieties. So when they come, I will let you know um, what varieties they are and what I'm gonna do with them. And I might even use my new hydroponics system to start the seeds off. I've only got seven pods in the hydroponics system, but maybe I could just start off seven seeds at a time and once they've got going, then I can put another seven in. That's the end of the day for today. I've shown you the seeds that I've been sowing and I've coppiced the eucalyptus. Um, hopefully I've given you the bravery to do your own as well. So I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. So as the weatherman predicted, it's pretty horrendous weather today. It's very windy and very rainy and a little bit chilly as well. Uh, so I'm just in the greenhouse around the back of the farm and I'm looking for a parcel that I've put in here. Oh, here it is. And I've got these um, shelving uh, brackets that I ordered on eBay and these actually come from a local company called Ellerton Greenhouses. So I ordered some brackets from them and I use them along this back wall. If you can see there, they just fit into the runners in the back of the greenhouse and then I can use my own shelf, like a plank of wood or a scaffold board or something to um, make extra shelving. So as you know, uh, us gardeners are always looking for a little bit of extra space. So I'm just going to put these up today and hopefully uh, we can put a few more trays of seeds in here. Okay, so I don't know if you can see them, but I've got the brackets up on the wall and I've just got one more bolt to put in to the, uh, the runners. And they come with these cropped bolts, so they're like half, half a bolt and you can slide it into the... Um, into this runner section of the greenhouse so obviously you have to have this type of greenhouse but I, I do believe that it is kind of universal in aluminium greenhouses you'll have to let me know if you've got an al al aluminium greenhouse whether um, yours has the runners on it as well so I need to go and get a spanner to tighten these up but I'm just gonna put this last one in so then when you tighten it up the cropped bolt sort of goes um, on an angle so that it can't come out of the runner and there we have it so I'm, I can have another shelf along the back there I might just lower it down a bit actually because it's quite high and then I can get maybe more seed trays along the back there so that's going to be it I think for today's video just because the weather's so horrendous I think I'm going to go and hide away in the workshop and get some jobs done for the shipping container conversion. So thanks so much for watching and I'm going to see you again on the weekend. And don't forget, if you enjoyed my videos, then don't forget to consider subscribing. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.